Welcome to another edition of Cabela's King Cat, coming to you from Kansas City, Kansas, on the banks of the Missouri River. We're shaping up to be a really great weekend. I'm Larry O'Donnell with uh, Little Blue River Watershed Coalition and Healthy Rivers Partnership. We use river cleanups to educate people about basically what happens when it rains. The storm water falls, picks up all that lightweight trash, and that's that stuff that comes out of the parking lots. It comes from all over town, it's lightweight. People drop it on the ground, and when it rains, it uh, floats gets into the storm drain, those storm drains go directly to the rivers and streams. So right now we're cleaning up the Missouri River right here through downtown. We're cleaning up bottles and uh, the styrofoam and the plastic bags, all that light floaty weight trash. So it's a big issue and it's a big education issue. Uh, we can keep picking it up, but it's trying to keep it off the ground. We have uh, several sites, uh, healthyriverspartnership.com littlebluerivermwatershedcoalition.org uh, and then the Facebook pages Healthy Rivers Partnership and also Blue River Rescue Welcome to this week's episode of King Cat Tournament Trail, coming to you from Kansas City, Kansas. Got a couple of anglers here with us. Guys, introduce yourselves and tell us where you're from. I'm Pat B. Singer from Troy, Kansas. I'm Michael Link from Atchison, Kansas. I'm here with Kevin Parks and Terry Fisher. My name's Casey Hayes. I'm from St. Joseph, Missouri. My name's Jeff Martinez. I'm also from St. Joseph, Missouri. I'm Chris Brenniger. I'm from Ashland, Missouri. Tell us about the conditions on the river right now and what type of weight you think it'll take to win the tournament. Oh, uh, right now it's probably the best we've had in a couple of years. The uh, water level's low and the uh, fish seem to be firing up this time of year. I think 150's gonna win it. Uh, there's always good fish caught, so, you know, somebody will bring in 60, 70, and then if you can get some good fish to go with it, you know, a little over 100, 120. All right, and what type of challenges do you think the anglers will face tomorrow with the low water conditions? Low water conditions I don't think will be much of a factor. I think it's going to be more of a, a, a change in the, the pattern of the fish. You know, we've had about a 10 degree water swing here in the last week and a half, two weeks. You know, water temperature here been running pretty consistent in the mid 80s and, and here recently it's really started dropping. I think the water temperature now is around 66, 67 degrees. So. Uh, the weather, I, can, I we really can't ask for anything better. It's been pretty stable, but this is the Missouri River. It can be feast or famine. It can go from catching three fish bags that weigh 150, 160 pounds to three fish bags that weigh 30 pounds in just a day. So uh, as far as the way we'll fish, uh, we'll probably do whatever, we'll bump a little bit, we'll anchor whatever it takes, you know. I mean, you can't be set in one way or the other what you're going to do. All right, so uh, tell us the difference in fishing the bottom and, and bumping. Bumping, you're moving along with the current. And this year with uh, lower water levels, it's uh, a little easier to control your boat. It's a little easier to present your bait. It's a, a little better scenario than it's been. We've had some bad floods last couple of years, this year's really gonna be good. With the water down like this, and this time of year, uh, like I say, we just wanna cover some ground, so bumping is what we're gonna do. Uh, you know, if the water's up and stuff, it would be more of an anchor bite, probably. These guys aren't just anglers. Uh, Kevin is also the owner and maker of Parks Planer Board. All right, so for some of the folks at home that don't know what planer boards do, could you tell us a little bit of, uh, about the purpose of them? 
The main purpose is to get your baits away from the boat, especially shallow water. We fish a lot of shallow water. So when you're running that troll motor in one and a half, two foot of water, then fish are spooked. So if you can get that bait, you know, 75 to 80 yards away from the boat, you know, then fish don't even know uh, that you're around. Plus, you know, you're covering that much more area and that much more scent in the water. Thank you for being an angler and a participant. We uh, wish you luck out there tomorrow. All right. Thank All right. you. Thanks, Thank brother. you for everything. Yep. Thank you, Terry. Stephen Grand Prix from uh, Rushville, Missouri. This is my wife, Nicole Grand Prix. We're down here, South Kansas City, trying to bump us up some blue cats. Bumping's still pretty effective right now. It's gonna go into a fall transition. Water's gonna cool down, so, so fish are gonna kinda start moving over, getting out of this hard current pretty soon. So basically, we're using a three-way rig with the dropper weight and our leader line coming out. And what we're doing is slowing the boat down to walk our bait down the channel. Once the water temperature cools down in uh, lower 60s, upper 50s, we'll kind of make a transition from this channel uh, over to the sand and in the dikes. Right now we've been using uh, shad and uh, carp right now. I personally don't like the bright sunny days with no clouds. It just kind of seems like the high pressure kind of uh, slows them down a bit. But we're doing okay. We, we got one fish, but nothing nothing spectacular so far. So a new cat fisherman, I, I would kind of advise them to kind of watch video. Anybody that fishes often, I mean, that they're watching is gonna give them good information to put them on fish. So I'm kind of all about everybody else catching fish so I've, I've caught enough of them where uh, to me you know it's it's always fun but getting somebody else on a big fish is uh, kind of more what I like to do. So this is pretty flat down through here there's a couple little brush piles we're trying to hit here but uh, I think we're gonna give it here a little bit longer in this spot and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to give it a shot somewhere else. John Jamison. I'm from uh, Spring Hill, Kansas, fishing the Cabela's King Cat here in uh, Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, beautiful day. This is my tournament partner, Justin Neese from uh, Odessa, Missouri, out here trying to catch a few fish. It's been a little rough today. We uh, lost a big fish this morning and uh, had another fish come off. So we're kind of struggling right at the moment, trying to put a, a good fish in the boat, we are using uh, skipjack and fresh shad. So Justin and I pulled in on this bend. We've had a little bit of experience on this bend over uh, the years. Um, it's a little late in the year for what we're doing right here, but we're trying to stick a big fish. Actually on this bend, there's uh, three or four underwater dikes. And by that, I mean just rock structures that come off the bank. You can't see them, they're all underwater. And we're trying to get our bait to walk around the end of this. And you know, on the right day, when that bait goes around the end of that rock structure, that's where that big fish lays. So we're trying our darndest to hook a big fish off of it. Bumping is something that myself is really known for and Phil King. Uh, we was some of the first in the industry to start this and again have our own line of custom rods but the overall the way that you want to do it the reason it's called bumping 
is every time I lift this pole and I drop the pole, I feel it bump the bottom. So we got a weight on a little dropper that's about a foot long on the dropper. And when that weight goes down, you feel it bump the bottom. And ideally, when you pick it up off the bottom, you feed it a little bit of line. So you're moving the bait down the river as you're bumping it along. And uh, what you're trying to do is just imitate a uh, dying or injured bait fish that's floating down the river. And ideally, you put it right in front of a big fish uh, and he eats it. So you're just trying to be natural, natural presentation. Cover a lot more water that way. Yeah, you cover a lot more water than a, a anchored boat. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one that catches fish in this boat, so I gotta I gotta focus. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to another segment of Catfish 101. I'm here with Trevor Justice, and today we're gonna to be talking about the different presentations in catfishing. So Trevor, tell me a little bit more about the different styles. Well, you're gonna see several different styles throughout the tournament trail. You know, the guys will be doing some bumping. Sometimes they'll be doing dragging, even uh, anchored up on some structure um, or drifting. Just all depends on the situation uh, and the, the location of, of the tournament. So tell me a little bit more about how current affects that. So current is actually the number one thing that causes them to do uh, a different or choose one style from another. So the style that they'll use if there's a lot of current is either bumping, anchored up on structure, or some sort of um, drifting. Um, if there is no, no current at all, then that's when they're going to put on uh, their planter boards and do some dragging. Well, thank you for sharing those techniques with the viewers, and thank you guys for tuning in on this segment. Stay tuned for more. I'm Eric Horton, I'm from Derby, Kansas. This is my wife, Jordan, and my daughter, Morgan. Can you look over there, Morgan? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> well, we're catching them, so we got three of them in the boat. We got a limit. I'm sure them old boys out there bumping the river are probably catching them a little better than us, but we ain't much for bumping. Seems how all my big fish comes on anchor, so I feel like if we're in a tournament, we need to be on anchor flinging bait. I like anchor fishing because I genuinely believe bigger fish come on anchor. The guys out bumping will catch a lot more fish, but the true giants, if you ever notice, will mostly come on anchor. Um, whenever I'm looking to anchor, I'm looking for a lot of bait in an area and I like to see wood in an area. So if I'm seeing bait and wood, there's a good chance I'm gonna set up on it. Those fish gotta come in there and eat. So if you're seeing a million Asian carp, you can just about guarantee a catfish right behind them. We uh, mostly fish Milford and Marion Reservoirs here in Kansas. We're down in Wichita, Kansas, so we don't get to come up here but a couple times a year. We're mostly lake people. So there's a deep hole right back in here and there's wood laid out in here. There's, I don't know, about a million Asian carp laid out in here and you're seeing them catfish pinned to the bottom. About five minutes before you came, we caught roughly a 20 pounder, so he's sitting in the live well right now. There's a lot bigger than that down there, and I wish it would have ate, but I'll take what I can get. They're all roughly. How much? <laughs> They've been on the oxygen, so they're full of energy. Yeah. Well, I grew up doing it, flinging stink bait from the bank, and uh, uh, you know, I fished all the time growing up. Then a couple years ago, we bought a boat and I couldn't figure out how to catch a fish on a, on a boat. So I stumbled across Steve Douglas on YouTube and I saw a guy catch a monster fish consistently and blew my mind that you could do that on the regular. And uh, so after that, I was determined I was gonna learn how to do it. Ended up traveling around the country, fishing with guides and they taught me the ropes. And from there, I just started growing the knowledge. Oh, it's a blast. It wouldn't be worth doing these tournaments if the family couldn't come. It's family time. To be a good fisherman takes so much time, you're on the road so much that you can't justify doing it unless you're bringing the wife and the kid along. So it's, it's good. They enjoy getting out here and wrestling the fish. And heck, I never reel in a fish. I'm just a tour guide. 
Yeah, we're in charge of reeling in the fish. <laughs> Morgan wants to He's the net man. man. <laughs> Mostly it's just fun. Um, I mean, I throw a fit waking up early in the morning, but then once you get out here and you get to see the sunrise on the water, then I'm like, okay, this everything has been worth it. You know, it's just beautiful out, being out on the water, seeing the sunrise, hanging out with um, Eric and Morgan. Biggest catfish you ever pulled in. Is it bigger than you? <laughs> yes, sir. Did you say 34 pounds? 34 pounds. Whenever we link her up with good fish, we leave the rod in the rod holder and just have her go start cranking on the handle. That way she, she still can't hang on to a rod. She ain't quite big enough yet. So her biggest was last year on Milford at 34 pounds. It gave her all she wanted. I think one of our best days was when we were down at Texoma. Yeah. And uh, we just did one big drift and was catching them all day. I think we took second on that one. Yeah. That was great. That was a great fun. We had a good time at Cabela's King Cat too, a couple years ago, whenever the championship was on Milford. Day one, we ended up pulling up on a spot, didn't have an over in the boat by 11 a.m. Pulled up on a spot and within an hour had two darn near 50 pounders in the boat, pretty close to. I think the funniest story would be we were, um, one of the tournaments we did, they had to do a live well check ahead of time and she had some Barbies in there from when we were out playing before and he was like, oh, I've never seen Barbies in a live well before. Um, so that was funny. All right, here we go live. Cabela's King Cat Trail from Kansas City, Kansas on the Missouri River. We have our first anglers coming to the scale. Terry Haraway, John Berglund. These guys have been at every event with us this year. Could be a thousand dollar fish right there. Oh, wow. Oh, beautiful blue beautiful cat. Fish. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's a new big. There it is. 78.64. Well, we caught this one bumping right at the end of the day. I mean, we we anchor fished until probably 1.30. No fish in the boat. And we're, I told Terry, I said, let's go bump this stretch and see what happens. We missed three fish before this one. I had one break me off, you know, 80 pound leader. I set the hook and he peeled drag and just broke me off. We made it another 100 yards down and hooked into this one last second. Nice fish. There we go. Strong three fish for sure. Nice. Absolutely. First one, uh, the 30 pounder roughly came in uh, about 10 o'clock and we caught the last one uh, last minute. Coming to the scales, Craig Norris and Nick Foster. How Craig many you got? from Kansas, Nick from South Dakota. There we go. I think we got to weigh that big one. Absolutely. 83.06. These guys coming up here, Justin Clare, Joel Roberts. Oof. Oh, look at that fish, huh? Ooh. Hold on tight, Bo. <laughs> 110.10. You guys got your three? Got three, all right. On a day like today, you'll take three, won't you? Get ready. Got two them both. There we go. All right. Look how strong that fish is. New leaders, 115.99. We were just bumping, man. The whole day? Well, we stopped to eat some lunch and decided we'd anchor fish and caught another big one while we were anchored eating lunch. So you can't beat that. Did the bigger one come when you stopped? Uh, no. No? Elk bait. What kind of bait were you using? All carp. All common carp. Really? Just carp? Okay. All day long. While they're getting the fish out, we'll talk about our payouts for today. First place will receive $5,000. Second place will receive $2,500. Third, fifteen hundred. Fourth place, a thousand. Big fish sponsored by Anvil Rods will also pay out a thousand. All right, it's David and Christopher. You guys, uh, eighty pounds, 0.45 ounces. That's a great showing. That that'll win a lot of tournaments. It won several of ours this year. Um, tell us what you did to get it done today. 
Well, I'll tell you what, the morning bite was on. We dropped our baits in the water, four bumps and bam, got our first big fish. It was awesome. Third place, Craig Norris and Nick Foster. These guys take home $1,500 today. 83 pounds, .06 ounces. We started off on anchor, and if I could change it, I would have started off by bumping. Okay, did all your fish come by bumping? Yes. Today started just to be, just to have fun, and then it got real serious after we caught that 60. It, that'll do it every time. It's like, let's start with fun. Second place winners, Justin Clare and Joel Robert. Oh, we definitely wanted one more fish. Okay, all right. Would you have done anything different? Do the same thing. Okay, anybody you guys want to thank? Tyson Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and why are we doing Tyson Chicken? Because we were using chicken and Kool-Aid. You know? Ah, there we go. Now we got the secret out right now. <laughs> First place winners, DJ Meredith and James Jackson, 115 pounds, .99 ounces. We just started bumping first thing this morning, um, just like we always do. Haven't caught anything anchored for quite a while now. Uh, everything went good first off. Like I'd say by what seven o'clock, we probably had our first fish in the boat, and uh, the last one was at noon. So it was pretty hard, but a lot of, a lot of fish. tough fishermen here. We we fish with all these people all the time, and there's a lot of tough fishermen. Well, Bob, another successful King Cat weekend here in Kansas City. Yeah, it was an incredible time. Really love what the city's done for us. What a beautiful river. What a beautiful city. And we're excited that you're part of our show. So just stay tuned. Next week, we got another episode coming of King Cat. It's a new day.